Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. And if you're watching this on the first, second day of Eid, then Eid Mubarak to you guys. In this video, I will be, this video by the way is only for IGCSE students because I'm gonna be covering a topic which is cubic sequences. It's part of number sequences. It's not paid a lot of attention to. That's because it is not tested very often. In fact, I was doing a live stream. So a question on this popped up. So I thought might as well make a video on it. And you guys obviously requested me to make a video on this as well. So uh, without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. Now, before I get into the video, I just wanna say that if you're new here, although that's not what I had in mind, but yeah, that's what I wanna say as well, that if you're new here and you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel and make sure to like this video and share it with your friends and whoever you think can possibly benefit from it. What I actually wanted to say was that I will attach a link to the notes where you can download it. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know, that's good practice. Share it with whoever you want to do, do whatever you want with it. Okay. Now, anyway, so the first three sequences I've already covered. I did a live stream on the first three sequences, arithmetic, quadratic, geometric, what I'm going to be doing in this video particularly is cubic sequence, okay? So first of all, how do you identify that a sequence is a cubic sequence? Okay, obviously once you've identified that it's a cubic sequence, only then will you be able to do whatever is necessary to find the general term of a cubic sequence, okay? So let's first time, uh, start by finding out the difference and don't freak out, I'll tell you what this is, okay? Don't worry about this just as yet. So first let's find out the difference between four and 14, so that's gonna be 10. And then let's find out the difference between 40 and 14. So that's 26. Then the difference between 40 and 88. So that's 48. Then the difference between 164 and 88. So that's equal to 76. Okay, so that's what we normally do irrespective of whether it's an arithmetic sequence, cubic sequence, or uh, arithmetic, quadratic, or geometric. Okay, so we do nothing different for cubic. Except that we go further. Now we find out the difference between 10 and 26. So that's gonna be 16 the difference between 48 and 26, so that's gonna be 22. Then the difference between um, 76 and 48, so let's do that, 76 minus 48, so that's 28, okay. Now we go a step further, we find out the third difference, and yes, that is what you do in a cubic sequence, that's different from the sequences that I mentioned earlier. So the difference between 16 and 22 is six, the difference between 22 and 28 is also six. Okay, now we've identified a pattern. The pattern is that it's the third sequence that's common, okay? So that is what tells us that this is a cubic sequence. Now, normally I don't prefer that you memorize a lot of stuff, but in this case, I have no choice. You must memorize these formulas, okay? And what do they mean? They will basically help us find out the value of A, B, C, and D. And what exactly is A, B, or what exactly are A, B, C, and D? So a cubic sequence basically looks like this. A n cube, it's like a cubic equation if you're familiar with that. A n cube plus B n square plus C n plus D. Okay, so we have to find out the value of A, which is the coefficient of n cube, the value of B, which is the coefficient of n square, the value of C, which is the coefficient of n, and the value of D, which is the constant, okay? So what we can find out easily is the value of A. How? By simply using this, that 6A equals to D3. So 6A is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to the third difference, which is equal to six. So that means we now have the value of A immediately, and that's equal to one, okay. Then we use this equation, which is 12A plus 2B equals to D2. And in case you're wondering what D2 is, don't worry about it. D2 is basically the second difference, which in this case, in our case, is 16. So 12, so I've just realized, forgot to write down A here. So let me just erase this. 12a, although it wouldn't have made a difference because 12 into one is gonna be 12 anyway, but 12a plus 2b equals to d2, yeah. So 12 into one plus 2b equals to 16. So 2b is equals to 16 minus 12, which is four. That means b is equals to two. So two down and two more to go. Now to find out the value of c, we use 7a plus 3b plus c, which is equal to d1. And what's d1? d1 is the first difference right here, okay? So seven A means seven into one, so that's seven. Three into two means six, plus C, which is equal to the first difference, and that's equal to 10. So seven plus six is 13. So 13 plus C is equals to 10, which means that C is equals to minus three. And there you go, that's the value of C. Now in order to find out the value of D, we use A plus B plus C plus D, which is equal to what? Which is equal to T1. And in case you're wondering what T1 is, T1 is the first term, which in our case is equal to four. So we have the value of A, we have the value of B, which is two. We have the value of C, which is minus three. We don't know what D is, 
So that's equal to what? That's going to be equal to 4. Okay. So let's work this out. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 minus 3 gets cancelled out. And that means D is equals to 4. And now we have the value of A, B, C, and D. So now it's just about putting it all together. So 1N cube or simply N cube will do the job. Plus 2N square minus 3N plus D, which means plus 4. And there you go. That's it. That's your answer. Okay. Now I know this is a lot easier said than done. It's a lot of stuff that you have to memorize, but you know, I'm afraid that's how it is. So might as well do it that way. But this is like a guaranteed way of getting it right. Okay. There are no exceptions. There are, you know, there aren't any sequences where, you know, you'll come across a different method, although there is an alternative method, which I will teach you at the end of this video. Okay. But this is like your sure shot of getting the question right. Now, once you've done this, before you move on to the next question, here's what I would suggest. I would suggest that you quickly check your answer. How? So pick any random term. So let's say I pick the third term. So if I plug in three in place of n, that means the answer should be equal to whatever the third term is, which in our case is equal to what? Which in our case is equal to 40. So you don't have to show any working for this. Just straight away, do it in your calculator and see whether you're getting the correct answer or not. So three cubed plus two into three squared, mind you, sorry, uh, yeah, two into three squared. What I'm doing is I'm plugging in n, I'm plugging in three in place of n. So two plus three squared minus three into two plus four. So, so yep, the answer is in fact equal to 40. So the third term is equal to 40. That means the sequence above is correct. Okay, so that was one example. Let's do another example in case you haven't fully gotten the hang of it. So here's example number two. And we start by doing the exact same stuff that we did earlier. So we find out the first difference between two and 12, which is going to be 10. Then the difference between 12 and 40, which is going to be best that I use a calculator. So that's 28. Then the difference between 40 and 98, which is going to be 58. Then the difference between 98 and 198, which is equal to 100. And that's good enough. Four differences are good enough, okay? So the difference between 10 and 28 is going to be 18. The difference between 28 and 58 is going to be 30. The difference between 58 and 100 is going to be 42. But just to be on the safe side, let's use a calculator. The good thing that uh, about IGCSE is that calculator is allowed in all the papers. So, you know, you don't have to worry about doing this all mentally. And now to find out the difference, the difference between the third difference, 18 and 30 is 12. The difference between 30 and 42 will also be 12. Okay, so now we have everything that we need. So might as well label it from the get-go. Uh, D3 is 12, DT, uh, D2 is 18, and D1 is equal to 10. And here's D1, which is equal to 2. Okay, now let's start plugging in the values. So 6A equals to D3, which means 6A equals to 12, which means that A is equals to what? A is equals to 2. Then 12A, which means 12 times 2, plus 2b is equal to the second difference, which is 18. So that means 2b is equals to 18 minus 24. So that's minus 6, which means b is equals to minus 3. And now 7a, which means 7 times 2, plus 3b, which means 3 into minus 3, plus c is equals to d1, which is equal to 10. So 14 minus 9 plus c is equals to 10. So 14 minus 9 is 5. c is equals to 10 minus 5, which is equal to 5. Again, you can just use your calculator for all this. Once you plugged in your values, I would strongly suggest just use your calculator, okay? Now, for the final value, which is the value of d, so a plus b plus c, which is 5, plus d is equal to what? Is equal to the first term, which is 2. So this 2 and this 2, you can simply cancel. Minus 3 plus 5 is going to be equal to 2. So 2 plus d equals to 0, which means d is equals to minus 2. And there you go. That, I believe, is the correct answer. Yep, that's the correct answer. So now let's write down the final answer nicely. 2n cubed minus 3n squared plus 5n minus 2. And there you go. There you have it. You now have the cubic sequence. You now have the general term of this sequence, which is a cubic sequence, okay? Now, if you've understood what I've done up until here, that's great, okay? I would suggest you stop watching this video. But if you're like me, who wants to know multiple methods of doing the same thing, then you can continue watching this video because that's what I'm about to teach you. I'm about to teach you an alternate method, which by the looks of it is kind of scary, okay? It's no denying that. But you don't have to memorize a lot. You just have to memorize one thing which is going to be new compared to the sequences that we've did that we've done earlier okay now let me show you what i'm talking about so basically if you remember the arithmetic sequence then you would know this formula a plus n minus one into d1 
if you know how to solve for the general term of a quadratic sequence, then you would know this up until here. Now, the only thing that's new in a quadratic sequence is this, and this entire formula will give you a cubic sequence, right? The only thing that's new for a cubic sequence is this, and this entire formula will give you the general term of any cubic sequence. Now, I know it looks kind of intimidating. It is, there's no denying that, but uh, let's put it to the test, okay? So this is the same example as I did earlier. So let's write down the value of d1, d2, and d3, since you can see that that's what we're gonna be using here as well, d3, d2, d1, and of course the value of a. Okay, so the first difference is 14 minus four, which is 10. And then the second difference is gonna be 26. And then the third, uh, not the third difference, actually, the difference between the second and the third term is 48. Okay, just to be on the safe side, 40 minus 14 is indeed 26. Okay, now the difference between 10 and 26 is 16. The difference between 48 and 26 is equal to uh, 22. And now to find out the difference between uh, to find out the third difference, we take uh, 22 minus 16, which is equal to six. And that's it, that's all that we need, okay? So let's just double check and make sure that I've done everything correctly. 10, 26, 16, and six. 10, 26, 16, and six. Okay, perfect. So we have everything that we need. We have the third difference. We have the second difference. We have the first difference. And we have the value of A, which is basically T1 in this case. Uh, which, uh, we have the value of T1, which is A in this case, basically. Okay, so now it's a matter of plugging it all I mean, bringing it all together, plugging it into this formula, and there's a whole bunch of simplification that's required. So I'll give you that. Yes, there's a lot of simplification that's required in this, which we didn't have to earlier. So a plus n minus one into d1 basically means four plus n minus one into the first difference, which is 10. So we'll simplify this later. Then d2 upon two, which means 16 upon two. Now you can, what you can do is to save some time, you can simply memorize the expanded version of this. So that's gonna be n squared minus three n plus two. Why? Because it's gonna be the same thing over and over again. So n squared minus three n plus two. And then d3, which is six upon six. And now, as we did earlier, you can memorize the expanded version of this. So since we already know what the expanded version of n minus one, n minus two is, so that's n squared minus three n plus two. Now all you have to do is multiply it with n minus three. So that's gonna be equal to n cube minus three n squared. Okay, minus three n squared plus nine n plus two n minus six. Okay, so now I'm gonna simplify this. So n cube minus three n squared minus three n squared will be minus six n squared. Nine n plus two n is 11 n and yeah, that's correct. Minus six as it is. Okay, let me make sure that what I've done is correct. Um, yep, by the looks of it, everything looks good so far. Okay, now like I said, all you have to do now is just simplify. So this six and this six gets canceled out. Two ones are, two eights are, and let's expand and simplify. So four plus 10 n minus 10, okay, plus eight n square minus 24 n plus 16. And since we just have one here, so that means the entire expression as it is. n cube minus six n square plus 11 n minus six. Okay, now let's carefully simplify this. So we have n cube, okay, so we can cross this out since we've dealt with it. And now let's look at all the terms with square. So we have eight n square minus six n square. So if you simplify this, let's see what do we get. So eight minus six is going to be plus two n square. Let's see if we're on the right track so far. Yep, we're on the right track so far because the value of b is in fact equal to two. Now let's find out the value of C. So let's see, let's gather all the terms with N. So we have 10 minus 24 plus 11. So it's best that we use a calculator for this. 10 minus 24 plus 11. So that's minus three, minus three N. And now let's look at all the constants that we have. So that's four plus 16 minus six. So let's do that. In fact, I forgot the minus 10. So four minus 10 plus 16 minus six. So we're looking at plus four. So this is, the general term of this sequence. Now let's make sure that we've done it correctly by comparing it with what we got earlier. n cubed plus two n squared minus three n plus four. n cubed plus two n squared minus three n plus four. Let's double check. Yep, that's correct. And there you go. This, like I said, is an alternative method. Now, whether or not you should know this method, well, that I'll leave it up to you. In fact, one thing that I would like you guys to tell me is that let me know which one you found easier, okay? And which one you would like to stick to. 
And uh, it's best to have both of these methods. I mean, it's best to get a good grip on both of these methods. Okay. And once you have a good grip on both of these methods, then of course, when you have to solve a question, you can just stick to one. So that's it. I hope you guys have understood what I've done. And uh, my apologies for taking so long to make this video. And uh, that's it. Don't forget to tune in to the live streams that I'll be doing, inshallah, in the next couple of days up until the day of exams. And I'll also be covering important topics like trigonometry, number sequences, and all that. So that's it. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.